Hello and welcome to producing and consuming OData in an Silverlight and Windows Phone 7 application. This is part one of three, so please come back for the other two parts. Uh, my name is Michael Crump. I'm an MCPD. I blog all things Silverlight at michaelcrump.net. You can also check me out on Twitter at mbcrump, and don't forget to visit silverlightshow.net. So what are we going to do today? Uh, I'm going to walk you through a couple of the steps that is needed to produce an OData data source and then we're basically just going to query it using the browser and link pad. So as a kind of a step by step, we'll start with uh, we're going to generate an empty ASP.NET web project. Then we're going to generate a SQL compact edition for database. We're going to populate it with data then we will create the entity framework for model and the OData data service we're going to query the service but first let's go ahead and give a definition of OData so what is OData? OData is simply an open web protocol for querying and updating the data it allows for the consumer to query the data source and retrieve the results in Atom, JSON or plain XML format. This also includes ordering and filtering of the data. So that is a quick definition of OData. Let's go ahead and jump straight into Visual Studio and see how we actually do this. So now I'm in Visual Studio make that a little bit bigger. I'm going to go File, New, Project, and I'm going to make sure we're on web, ASP.NET, Empty, Web Project, and I'm going to name this SL Show OData P1 for Silverlight Show OData Part 1. And we're on .NET Framework 4, and we click OK. We need to just give it a few minutes to spin up, and now you'll see we have our empty ASP.NET web application. So let's go ahead and let's begin by creating our SQL Server Compact 4.0. So let's type in Compact, and we see we now have our SQL Server uh, Compact 4.0 local database, and let's just name this Customers customers.sdf and if you don't have this option available check out the article for which you actually need uh, to install this basically you're just going to grab the web platform installer and uh, get service pack 1 for Visual Studio 2010 and then after you get that service pack there is tools for SQL Server uh, Compact 4.0 that you're going to want to add so go ahead and click add here and it'll say you are attempting to add a special file type, SDF, to an ASP.NET website. Uh, you should place it in the app.data folder. Do you want to place it? And yes, we do. So now we have our customers.sdf. Let's just right click on this and let's hit open. And you see here under our data connections we have customers.sdf and we have our tables in replication. Let's go to our tables and let's create a table and let's just name this customer info and we're going to add in some fields here. So first we'll start with an ID and we'll put this as an int. Primary key, yes, and we'll just change the identity to true one in one. So now we're going to add a couple of fields in here. We're going to have a first name a last name, a city, actually let's do address, city, state, and zip. So now that we have that in there we're just going to leave this as varchar and we're going to hit OK. So now we have our customer info table. This is going to be our collection for Entity Framework that we're going to use in just a moment. So let's right click on this and let's show table data. And now I just need to punch in some data. So I'm going to go pretty quick on this. I want to 
to give a state an actual name. Everything else I'm just going to make up. just to get us some sample data in here. Okay, now I've, we have some sample data. We're just going to go ahead and close. We can go back into this and we can show our table data and we can see that we actually have our data it's saved so now we're going to come back to our project and we're going to right click we're going to add, go add new item and let's just type in entity here and we're going to select the ADO.NET entity data model okay we're going to name this customers model And we're going to hit OK there. And I'll tell you what, let me try to refresh my screen here. Looks like, uh, looks like it found some sort of artifact. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to generate from database and hit next. We're going to leave this on customers.sdf, which is simply referring to our customers.sdf in our app data and we're going to save the entity connection settings just as customers entity so hit next and on this next screen it's asking to choose your database objects we're just going to put a check in tables which will select all of them we're going to let it pluralize our generated objects names which means our customer info right here will turn into customer infos and then we're going to include foreign key columns so now hit finish and now that you've hit finished you'll see it's spinning up a little bit and we have our customer info okay so now I'm going to show you this looks good looks like it generated what we need so now that we have that we're going to actually create our WCF data service so right click on our project again, go to add, then go to new item. I'm just going to look for WCF and you see we have a WCF data service. And let me make sure I'm putting in the right name here. Let's go ahead and name this. customer service dot SVC and let's hit OK and as you see here it is asking for our data service this is actually going to be our customer infos so I have a cheat sheet here it's going to help us speed this along a little bit and then we'll describe each line so I'm going to get rid of these lines and as you see here we have our customer service a data service and then our customer entities we have our initialized service this was boilerplate code already set for you and then we're going to set the entity access rule on our customer infos which is where I just said just a few moments ago that it pluralized our customer info and then our entity set rights is going to be all read so we have authorization to read the data and then we set our data service behavior dot max protocol version to version 2 and uh, as you see as you hover over these things it it will give you a little bit more info if you need it so let's go to build solution 
So now that we've built the solution, we can come back to our customer service. And I'm just going to do a view in browser. And we know that it is working right because we now have our default customer infos. So if I right click and I do a view page source, you will see that I have a collection here. And in some browsers, if you use Internet Explorer, um, it would actually show the XML. And this is the latest version of Chrome, which it does not you actually have to do a view source. So we see we have a collection here of customer infos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to query that. And I have a code snippet here that will help us get through this a little bit faster. So now I've just queried my customer service with customer infos. And in this collection, you will see that it starts here. I have Michael Crump as my first record, and then I have the John Doe, and then as we keep on scrolling down to even the last one, you'll see we have Ridley Crumpton. And if we look at our table information, show table data, you'll see we have our Michael Crump and our Ridley Compton. We can take that a couple of levels further by adding in this next thing. So let me just grab this out. I'm sorry I had to change the port number. So our next screen here, it is saying this is our service and I want the number two of our collection called customer infos. And number two is listed as John Doe, as you can see right there. So if we come back to our project, number two is John Doe. Well, we can take this another level and we can grab, we can filter it. Now I added in, um, I added in two records that ended with the state of AL. And the first one was just my Michael Crump with the state right here of AL. And then I added in one more, which is down here at the bottom. And uh, that was the Ridley Crumpton. So uh, I can verify that by coming back over here and seeing the state is set to Michael Crump and then Ridley Crumpton was also set to Michael Crump. So if we look at this we will see that in this sample we had a customer service.svc customer infos with a question mark dollar sign and then our filter was on state which is a field that we have defined equals with an EQ and then I just added in a yell, and that only returned those two records. So let's take it another step further. And this time, we're going to filter the ID is greater than three, and after that is complete, we're going to order it by our first name. So we'll come back over here. this line and as you see here we have our filter ID greater than three order by first name so coming into this our first name was Jane and our second name is Ridley and in this example there is only five so of course it's only going to add two so that is how to query it through the browser. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look at this through LinkPad. So I'm just going to do a LinkPad. See if I can get it to come up. Now that I have LinkPad up, I'm going to simply add a connection. I'm going to do a WCF data service. 
OData. I'm going to hit Next. And in this example, this port is 1314. And I'm going to do a test. Our connection succeeded. And then back to OK. So after that is complete, make sure that you come back up here to Database and you select the proper database before you use the link query. So I have two quick link queries I wanted to add here. The first one is a from G in customer info select G. And as you see here, this selected our first five. And then I have one more. And this one is from G in customer infos where G.ID greater than two, order it by first name, select G. And as you see, it is listed right here, our three elements. So this was a quick intro on producing a OData data source, querying it through the browser, and then finally querying it through LinkPad. Um, what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to consume this data using Silverlight, and in the third and final part, we're going to consume the same data using Windows Phone 7. Thank you very much for listening today, and my last slide is uh, questions. If you have questions, you can check me out at michaelcrump.net. You can email me there at michael at michaelcrump.net, and Twitter is probably your best bet at mbcrump. Also, don't forget to visit silverlightshow.net for the latest in Silverlight, Windows Phone 7 news, tutorials, screencast, and I also appreciate Silverlight News for supporting my user group, allaboutsaml.net. Thank you very much. Until next time.